It might also be argued that the High Court will create a new qualification based upon saving people who are ignorant of their foreign citizenship. Now, the problem here is that candidates can hardly be unaware of the need to comply with Section 44. And let me give you an example. If you consider the case of Deputy Prime Minister Barnaby Joyce, when he nominated for Parliament, he was required to sign a form at nomination to tick a box that said yes or no to, I am not by virtue of Section 44 of the Constitution, incapable of being chosen or of sitting as a member of the Federal Parliament. The form also set out the full text of Section 44 and stated, candidates who have any doubts about their eligibility by virtue of Section 44 of the Constitution are advised to obtain their own legal advice. Now, as I've indicated, dissent for citizenship is one of the most common ways of acquiring foreign citizenship. And if the Deputy Prime Minister had consulted a lawyer, very quickly it would have revealed and that he is a New Zealand citizen. And indeed, the form was designed to tweak people to go through exactly those processes. But even if the Deputy Prime Minister did not want to consult a lawyer, he could have found this out very quickly through a simple check. When Fairfax Media first approached me about whether Barnaby Joyce might be disqualified under Section 44, I went to my computer and Googled, am I a New Zealand citizen? I was taken to a New Zealand official government website headed, check if you are a New Zealand citizen. I was asked four straightforward questions, which I answered using Joyce's details, and within three minutes the screen said, you are a New Zealand citizen, <laughs> by dissent. Now, that process is as simple as it was for New Zealand. Other countries by no means that simple. Sometimes it's fiendishly difficult. But in this case, it's hard to see why the High Court would fashion an exemption when candidates have been warned of this problem and when the information is very easy to obtain through a simple check on the internet. Joyce's case and indeed those of the Greens members speak less of a constitutional problem and more of complacency and poor vetting on the part of parties. The Prime Minister has said of his deputy that he is qualified to sit in the House and the High Court will so hold. My view is that such confidence is misplaced. Joyce may survive High Court challenge, but personally I would be surprised if he does though. No more though can be said. There are arguments to be put on both sides and the High Court can be notoriously difficult to predict. The Court has set down these matters for hearing for, ten, for, three, for three days from 10 to 12 October. We may get a result in mid-October. We may have to wait till November. It's in the hands of the Court.